where your your ability to um stay passionate about what we do and not letting some of the nuances or not letting some of the things you don't know or some of the technology or the things you don't understand or the things that confuse you not not getting so caught up in all of the details and all of the weeds that you throw the baby out with the bath water you forget what you're really passionate about and you forget what really turns you on in terms of really helping people and changing and transforming lives and realize that and it's not always going to be easy but this is a but one of the but the juice of this outside of you doing this and helping people realize and outside of the money that you're going to get right because all of us is going to be financially free all of us is going to be very wealthy we're already speaking into existence. It's already happening, right? We're going to make a massive impact. We're going to help a lot of people. We're going to coach. We're going to train a lot of people. We're going to speak on stages. We're going to do all that good stuff. What I also want us, us to have a goal as, let our goal be focusing on growth. Personally, focusing on growth. I'm saying that because one, your business doesn't, your business is only- Phase presentation. We call it the phase presentation. Because you're going to go through the phases of your offer and you're presenting. So it's qualification, recommendation, presentation. All right. And the phase presentation, the presentation of what you're what you're giving people. All right. So that's why we call it that. So we got a few things and then we'll we'll take questions because we're going to go through because this this is going to be one of the longest ones that we have because we got to get this one right. So the very first thing, very first thing we need to do is we gotta have what we call our, our visual of our visual executive offer. Somebody jot that in the chat for me. Our visual executive offer. Visual executive offer. So inside of the playbook, if you went through the playbook already, there's a part of it where we talked about your executive offer, right? Your executive offer is specifically what you're giving people. So we got to get clear on what those deliver. The what and the why is important. So you'll do what it is, like what the feature is and why. And why is that feature important? So think about like features and benefits, right? Do the work because this is, this is how you make the money. In our industry, this is how you generate high tickets. You got to you got to be able to explain it. You know, when people say, you know, um, I know I can help, but it's just hard for me to kind of put it into words and hard for you to explain it. You'll you'll lose a lot of people like that if you don't know how to explain it. What I'm sharing with you is how to explain your program. That's really what it is. Like, how do you say it to somebody and how do you present it to somebody where it sounds good? And they like, yo, this is different. This is new. This this feels good. This feels exactly one minute like max. one minute max. Coach T, what do you mean one minute max? One minute max in terms of how long you're going to explain every one of these deliverables, right? So, meaning when you explain the deliverables, you saw how when everybody went, they popped it, pop, pop, boom. This is what you get. This is the name of the program. This is this is what this is what this is. What the deliverable is, and this is the benefit of it. If you go longer than sixty seconds explaining it, you're talking too much. So you should just, you should pop it and, and get going because the longer you explain it, the more questions that are actually come up and you're, and you're actually digging yourself a hole. They'll learn all of the details and everything when they get into the program. One of the biggest mistakes that I made early on that was that, that hurt me a lot doing consultations was I used to explain things in detail because I want them to know everything. I'm like, yo, we meet weekly. We meet every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And we talk about topics like this. And then guess what? Once I started really explaining it, they like, wait, hold up, wait, what day? Hold on, what? You said seven? Oh, actually, I got something. I got church during that time. Um, I mean, you can't do anything else. I can't do any other time. And then now, now we're talking for five or 10 minutes about that, right? So the thing is this, even if they can't make it, you got the replays, they can ask questions, depending on other deliverables you have, they might be able to get one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it's other ways to accommodate, but you don't want to you don't want to give too many details because you're giving one is time because you'll be on a two hour call with somebody. So that's one is time. But the second thing is they'll find out all of the details and the nuances once they get in the program. Right. So 
One minute. Turn secondary deliverables into bonuses. All right. So this is so this is like I want to say a hack, but this is like a secret that I've I've never really revealed to anybody. Right. So, but I'm I'm telling y'all because y'all y'all part of this program. I gotta I gotta give y'all everything. Y'all know, right? So the thing is this, right? As you continue to learn more about psychology, you realize that there's certain mental triggers that get people to take action. One of those triggers is skip. Well, two of those triggers are scarcity. In a sense, scarcity is, is is a is a quantity limitation, right? Um, right. So you know, scarcity like this is about to run out type situation, right? Um, sense of urgency is is like um, you like do it now before the deadline, right? So think quantity for scarcity. Not everybody can get it. And for sense of urgency, think of deadline, expiration, right? Time frame. So how this how, how you can use that type of psychology in your presentations is create. So you know how we have our deliverables, right? You create your core deliverable. You create maybe one or two core deliverables. And then all of your secondary or remaining deliverables, you explain it as bonuses. Right. So basically, you'll say, OK, you get one on one coaching, such and such. And then you'll say, you know, you'll also get, um, you know, you'll also get this um, this free master class. And then you can say as a bonus. But if you go ahead and you get it today. Then what I'll also throw in is the. I also throw in the um, the photo shoot. You feel what I'm saying? I also throw in these free event tickets. That gives you a sense of urgency. That gives them a sense of urgency. Like, all right, now nah, let me. And for their own good too, right? I mean, I, obviously that gets them to take action now and it helps us. But for their own good too, because as humans, it's it's very natural that we'll just procrastinate. We'll procrastinate the hell out of anything. Like, we'll wait. We'll try to wait to the last minute, the last moment. We'll like we'll wait until like we damn near dead. We'll wait until like we'll wait until circumstances get so bad or so extreme that we feel like we have. A heat check is basically, is basically, you're asking them if they have any questions, if, if it makes sense and has questions. So it's basically, I say, makes sense. And do you have any questions? The reason we ask that is because the best way to overcome objections is to answer them before they actually become objections. So if you ever listen to any of my calls, and maybe we'll do this in the future, we haven't done it in a minute, where like I, I play like one of my sales calls, right? Or maybe we could play one of your sales calls, right? So, or console calls. So basically I do these heat checks throughout the entire call. Does this make sense? Are you following me? Um, is this all coming together for you? Like, is this clear for you? Do you get what I'm saying? I do that all the time, right? And then I also say, do you have any questions? Now, in this particular phase, I only ask it once because we've been asking it a lot. If you was on last call when we did the, the recommendation, we were asking it literally after like every pillar, right? We we're asking it a lot. So in this phase, we don't necessarily need to ask it after every deliverable. You can ask it at the end of the, when you're at the end of your offer. So you could say, um, all right, cool. So I just went through everything. Is all of this making sense what we just went through? Usually they'll say, yeah, that, yeah, it makes sense. You'll say, okay, perfect. Um, do you have any questions about anything we just covered? Um, no, I don't have any questions. Or, you know, they might say, yeah, yeah. Um, how long do I get? How long do I get it? You know, how long do I get the master class for? Right. So basically also make sure too, when you're explaining this to them, you also explain, and I'm going to go back here for a minute. I hope I don't mess up your notes, but I'm going to go back here for a minute. I want you to say what the term is. The term is basically how long are you giving them access for? Because it's not going to be forever. Right. So you let them know like, okay, we're going to do one-on-one -on -one coaching for 12 weeks. Um, We're going to have I'm gonna give you you, but you, all of the master the master class that I'm gonna give you, you have lifetime access to that. 
You feel what I'm saying? So whatever it is, let them know the term of it or what they get. If you're giving somebody a free photo shoot, let them know. I'm going to give you one free photo shoot. So you get your headshots done and everything. You can add it to your website. Let them know the quantity. Let them know the term of it. All right? That's important. But, but at the end, you ask, you do a heat check to make sure everything makes sense. They don't have any questions. And if they do, answer them. Because that's very important because people don't buy who have questions. If they have questions, I'll put it this way. If somebody has questions in their mind and they don't verbalize it or they don't ask you, they're not going to buy because everybody write this down, a confused mind never buys. A confused mind never buys. So I'm asking you like a ton of, I'm really, I'm at, like, you good? You have any questions on this? It's making sense. Can you see yourself doing this? All right, perfect. I like asking that because I want to get a pulse of how they feeling about it. Are they feeling good about it? Do they feel like they can do it? Are they feeling like, like this is overwhelming? Do they feel like it's too much? Do they feel like they don't need it? Do they feel like, you know, this looks like everything else that they saw? What is it? I need, I need to know. And I want to know, I want to know before I give you the price. Cause once you give somebody the reason, the reason why, you know, you may hear people or, you know, people don't really necessarily throw out the price or willy nilly. You ever wondered that? Like, why, like what's going on? Why not just put the price in your website or why not just do this, do that. Right. The reason is, is because one, you one you might give people customized offers so that's one and you don't want to deter people before they get to your website this is a little bit of a tangent but this makes sense so we don't just give out the price because people will prejudge before they get on a call try putting out your price and saying it's 3500 or whatever you want to charge before and and you got to book a call with somebody Soon as they see the price, the first thing they're going to say to themselves, especially if they don't feel like they have it, is I can't afford it. We haven't talked about no payment plans. We haven't talked about what you could put down as the as a deposit. We ain't have no conversation. I couldn't get a chance to really, or you might have the money, but you just feel like, I don't know if I should do it. Now. Like you could be overthinking it. So you don't have an opportunity to even help somebody because they're already prejudging the price that you put on your website. So that's why we don't just we don't just do the price for willy nilly or willy nilly like that. But at the same time, you want to answer every question that you can for people, and then give them the price at the very next end. steps. Next steps. This is this piece. This piece is critical. The reason. So next steps is basically okay. I just presented you the program. You don't have any questions. You feel good about it. You understand. Now let's. Now we, this is basically the transition. So nobody likes to step into a black hole. And what I mean is people, when people pay, they like to know what the next steps are. People don't usually like to pay and like, okay, well, what now? What do I do? So I always say what the next steps are. So I'll say something like, I'll say something like, um, all right, cool. So everything looks good. All right, so here's the next steps. So next steps is you process the investment with me. So I'm letting them know, like, all right, now we're going into the money. We're going into the payment. You process the investment with me, and then we're going to schedule your onboarding. I recommend every one of us do an onboarding with your clients. Add that as part of your process. Do an onboarding. When you get a new client, do an onboarding. What, Coach T, what's part of the onboarding? It could be whatever you want, but usually I like to make the onboarding how to access, how to be successful in the program. Um, you know, some people, sometimes people don't know where to log in. Where do I get the resources from? Um, what are, what is our schedule going to look like? How often are we going to meet? What day and time are we going to meet? You feel what I'm saying? Like, those are all things. Do you have a Facebook group? Right. Um, when am I doing a photo shoot? Am I doing it tomorrow? Right. Or, okay. You might say, okay, once you get to this part of your progress, then we're going to do a photo shoot. You feel what I'm saying? So like that is where you you really get them straight on all the logistics of the program. And then you also catch them up with um, and that's a, and that's where you could tell them the details. You can say, OK, we meet this day, Wednesday at this time. This, you know, um, this is the link here. I just posted the link in the chat. You feel what I'm saying? Like that is where you actually give them access to what they need. If, they, if it's a course, that's where you unlock their access to the course. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why I recommend we all do onboarding with our clients. All right. And so what that means is you just need to sit down and just write out what are the things people need. So that is an action item. I'm giving everybody's action item. Figure out what your next steps are uh, or what your onboarding process looks like. Now, 
in terms of explaining this, you don't explain all of the next steps. You just basically say, we process the investment with me and then I do your onboarding. That's it. You don't got to explain what the onboarding includes. Okay? So I'm going to process the investment. So you're going to say process investment and onboarding. All right? And then you do a heat check after that. So then you'll say, okay, does that make sense? Any questions on that? All right, perfect. Then now, this is the fun part. Now we go into number seven, which is contrast and price drop. Contrast and price drop. So contrast is, this is, this is another, um, you know, this is like more psychology, right? So contrast. Contrast is you're comparing, so whatever you charge, right? People really need to have, sometimes people lose perspective right? Like I had somebody, well, it wasn't me, but I had one of my sales guys today who does consultation. I got a guy on my team. He also does consultations, right? He had somebody earlier this week, or I think it was like yesterday who said, wow, this looks good, but it's expensive, right? And, um, and I said, and, and, you know, he was trying to work through that, but because I listened to the calls, right? And one of the things that I said, I said, you missed it. He said, he said, I missed what? I said, you, I said, you didn't contrast. I said, people, people easily lose perspective when you don't contrast it. Meaning I like to contrast because this is more, and everybody's not, everybody's outcome is not money driven. So you gotta, you're gonna have to figure out, you're gonna have to match it to something that makes sense. And we can go through some examples so we can spend a, a second on this if y'all need to. But it's, it's easier for business because I can say, I'm helping you how much, one of the questions that I asked during the qualification is how much revenue do you want to generate per month? So people say anything, 5K a month, 10K a month, 15K a month, 20K a month, right? So people say anything, right? So then, so then now let's say somebody says 10K a month. So then once, once we get to this point, after I do the next steps, I'll say, okay, now let's talk about what the goal is and let's in the price. So the goal is you said you want to make 10K a month. So that's what we're going to be focused on. And what that looks like is 120K at the end of a year. So that's the goal is 120K in a year. All right. So 120K and the investment is just X. And that's the price drop. Because if somebody says, it's 120K and your program is 10K. That's like, okay, damn, that makes sense. Cause you just put it in perspective. Don't speak until, so I'm gonna tell you this. I made this mistake a lot. The problem that I, I used to make was because I was nervous, I used to talk through, they call it talking through the clothes, right? You don't wanna talk through the clothes cause people are processing. You know what I mean? They're thinking, they're trying to figure it out. Can I do it? Can I not do it? Can I afford it? Is it something that I can do? Is it now they're processing a bunch of things in their mind now. You don't wanna, you don't, you don't wanna interrupt it, let them go through their process. And then especially, you know, like we're, as humans, we can tell, like we can tell if somebody's nervous, we can tell most of the time, not all of the time, but if you, if you say the price and like, oh yeah, but, but, but we have, we have, um, we have this council. Oh, oh, but we can do installments and, oh, oh, and, and, and you just start interrupting a process. That's when you lose your power. You got to remember, we got to maintain control. We got to, we got to maintain a level of, 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 of power in the conversation, because remember, people are coming to us for wisdom. They're coming to us for advice. So we, 